So this will be an example walking through an engineering problem. This is out of a statics book. And we'll be using, instead of the what-if analysis, we'll be using a solver, which allows us to set more than one number to get the result. And what we're doing here is we have three cables holding down a balloon that has a buoyant force that's pulling up. And the question is, if we know the position of where these cables are tethered, so we know the direction of the tension in each of these things, we're going to add up all the forces at A so that they balance. So if we know that A is pulling up with, let's say, a 1,000 pounds, right? It has to be large enough to, to pick up some people, I guess, in a big old basket. So if, if we have a force going straight up, we'll call this the y direction, going up in the direction of P of 1,000 pounds, can we solve for the tension in each of these three cables? This will be a problem with three equations, three unknowns, and statics, where you add the forces in the x direction, in the y direction, and the z direction to zero. And the first piece of this would be to split the forces into their x, y, z components using unit vectors. We do that by getting just the fraction in the x direction, the fraction in the y direction. So some of this is already set up for you in the Excel spreadsheet. Study the diagram to see where this unit vector is coming from. So for cable A, B, and we're going to be adding up forces with respect to A, so we're pulling down on A. So we're going down in the y direction, 5.6 meters. So that's this dy, negative 5.6. And then we're going back in the x direction, 4.2. So we're going down and back for this AB cable that's pulling down and in the negative x direction. And then we can get these little unit vector ratios of how much is in the x direction versus the total direction where the total direction, this is the square root of dx squared plus dy squared plus dz. So these are just the distances in the x, y, z direction. And we call it a unit vector because if we add up all these little fractions, we get a unit. OK, so we don't know the magnitude of the tension in any of those cables. I'm going to scroll down here. We have one more table. And this is where we can add everything in the x direction to 0, the y direction to 0, and the z direction to 0. And the overall force here, we want to be 1,000 going up. And so all of these cables should balance out this 1,000 force going up. And the balloon is not acting in the x or z direction, so we can also fill in some zero forces here. OK, so for our forces, I'm actually going to go ahead and insert one extra little column here. If your tools ever disappear, you can pin them in place or this little arrow. You want some more room on your screen to see your cells. You can, you can change how these guys are displayed up here. So let me pin that in place for a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and insert an extra row in here. Actually, let me undo that. I'm going to move this guy up. What I want to do is I want to fill in a row for the magnitude of the overall forces. And I'm going to start here with an estimate. OK, so if this is going to be 1,000, I'll just put 1,000 in here. And this is going to be probably totally wrong, but that's OK. It's just a starting point. And I'm going to link this, maybe just so you can see. I'll make AB 1,100. And this you have to have a starting point to guess on these things. So I'll make those different numbers just so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and link this over here. So I'm going to say we're going to guess that AB has this tension, and we're going to guess that AD, so this is the one going back. So we're going down negative 5.6 and back 
So I'm going to say, let's start this guy out at 1,200. And then I'm going to start my AC out at 1,300. And once we have that starting guess for our forces, I'll go ahead and I'm going to take these. Remember, F4 is going to hold this constant and multiply it by our unit vector. So that's going to give me the fraction of that force that's in the x direction. And if I pull that down, that will give me the x, y, z chunks of it. So that's the fraction in the y direction. And in this case, there's nothing in the z direction when it comes to a, b. So see how it's entirely in that x, y plane there. And we can check that we, we split everything upright by adding those back together, and we should get that 1,100 back. So this is just a little bit of vector analysis that you'll see in any mechanics class where you're splitting vectors apart into components. You'll use unit vectors, and this tends to be a, a fast way to, to set those calculations up. Okay, so I'm going to do that for all three of these tensions. Control C, Control V, and here's my last one. And of course, remember I started out just guessing what those tensions were. So this 1100, 1200, 1300, that's not actually the right value, but we're going to guess and we'll let Excel Solver actually take this and fix it. Okay, so we have our forces split into X, Y, Z components. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put those X, Y, Z components into my table over here. So I'm grabbing here from A, B. So that will be my A, B. I'll grab over here for A, D. And I'll grab over here for A, C. So these are all linked to one another. I'm not typing in numbers here. I'm making sure that everything I do here is linked over here. Okay, now right now, if I add up everything in the x direction, and the y direction, and the z direction, you see that this is not actually adding to zero. So to have an equilibrium situation, we want to have everything in the x, y, z direction, all of this add to zero. And I guessed the wrong tensions. If I change these around, Right, so if I change this to 1500, you can kind of see, oh, did that get closer or farther away from zero? And that's essentially what the numerical solution is going to do. It's going to come over here and just start putting some random numbers into all these tensions and play around with it in a great big loop until it sees everything minimized. And eventually, what we want is for all three of these, x, y, and z, everything to add to zero. Now there's one more thing I'm going to do here. It can minimize this and get this to zero by making some negative and some positive, and we don't want that to happen. So instead of just adding these together, I'm going to actually say this is the absolute value of adding these together. And that means that it can't reach that zero solution by making some negative and some positive. They're all going to have to be positive. Okay, so this is going to be for our solver. This cell right here is going to be our goal that we would reach this to a, to a value of zero. And we're going to try and get this to go to zero by changing these tensions up here. So now that we have all of our equations in there and everything set up, I'm going to go ahead and go over to data and use this solver. If the solver isn't popping up in your um, ribbon up there, you're going to go to File, Options, and let's see, Customize Ribbon. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to say Solver. Set objective. So our jet, that's going to be this cell. And we're going to make this a minimum. We can set it to a value of zero. And sometimes if it can't 
get all the way to zero, that's going to be trouble. So minimum that might be a little bit safer. And we're going to do that by changing the numbers in all three of these cells. Okay, so this is the, yeah, instead of just a little goal seeker, the solver allows us to put in multiple cells and it's gonna change the value in all three of these in order to, to minimize this. And, and again, the goal is to add the forces and everything adds to zero. So cross your fingers and let's go ahead and solve it. If this doesn't work, we will try to, um, figure out some better starting values. So we see this is 100. It's still not down to where it could be. So let's go ahead and try this one more time. And let's go ahead and do a value of zero this time. And one more solution. Oh, we got closer. There's 16. Let's try it one more time maybe. It, it's only, it has a limit to how many times it goes around the loop. Otherwise it could sit there for, you know, infinity. <laughs> so maybe we go back to minimize by changing these cells. So yeah, let it run a couple of times and it's, yeah, it's not perfect, but it's, yeah, this is, it's pretty, it's pretty close here. Okay. So that's, that's how to use the, the solver. See if you can set this up. The second piece of this is to look at how those tensions are changing as a function of this upward force. And so if it wasn't 1,000, if it was 2,000 or 3,000, to create a graph with a trend line showing the magnitude of those three tensions and how that magnitude changes as a function of the buoyant force of that balloon. So this is this is a challenge problem. And if you figure this out and turn this in, I'll give you some good some good bonus points for that.